Hi everyone, my name is Connie and I was due to give you a guest lecture in a few weeks time but due to COVID-19 that obviously cannot take place. And so your lecturer Amy has asked me to talk a little bit about my career and what I do and I am an animal behaviourist and it's been a very up and down journey to get to where I am today. So I'm going to share some stories and some experiences of how I made it to this point in my career. So, like many animal lovers, I started out as a very young age wanting to be a vet and I carried on that dream up until I was 19 years old. I always had a desire and a drive to work with animals and as soon as I possibly could, I got out there. And so at 12 years old, I started working on lambing farms and then through my teenage years, I extended this into veterinary practices, into dog kennels, horse stables, um, and even zoos. And I particularly loved my zoo place and it really showed me a different side um, to animal care. Work experience really is the most essential and important thing that you can do if you'd like to work in the animal industry. And it's so invaluable as it really shows you what you like and what you don't like. And so alongside all the work experience that I was completing, I was also working really hard to get great GCSEs as I wanted to get into veterinary school. And I did achieve the GCSEs that I wanted and I made it into sixth form. However, this is where things started to become a little unstuck for me. Sixth form wasn't quite what I'd hoped it, it was going to, uh, to be. So I struggled immensely with sixth form. I was flooded with self-doubt and I really started to believe that I wouldn't make it into the animal career that I wanted to go into. And it was at a point where a teacher screamed at me and told me that I wasn't working hard enough, even though I was, that I realised I did not have to put myself through this and that there must be another option, another route for me to be able to work with animals. And that's when I discovered that colleges hosted diplomas for animal care. And so I left sixth form and I applied for a level three diploma in animal management and started that as soon as I possibly could. And I did find that there is some stigma of colleges and some people implied that I wouldn't be as successful because I'd chosen to go to college over sixth form, but they were very wrong. And anyone that tells you that now are still wrong. Going to college really shaped and changed my life. I finally had hands-on experience of animals and I was learning about different pathways that I could take that didn't necessarily mean that I had to be a vet. And that's where my pathway changed. I discovered animal behaviour, I fell in love with it. I love that you can observe an animal and almost understand what it might be experiencing or going through based on the things that it displays to you. And so on the way to my veterinary dreams, I got completely lost and I found a new one and decided that animal behaviour was something I wanted to pursue. And so I took on a, an animal behaviour and welfare degree. I really, really loved my degree. I got really stuck in and I was fortunate enough to be offered a job working with the college animal collection and that's where your lecturer Amy actually trained me to work with the collection and I had so much fun there. I offered my weekends up for an entire year just so that I could gain experience and that's a huge sacrifice but it was 100% worth it. And due to those sacrifices I made and due to the work that I put in, I was offered a promotion into a higher role as a technical instructor on the animal unit. And uh, I did that part time whilst doing my degree. And this meant that I got the opportunity to manage animal sections. And so I was managing um, small mammals, really. So flying squirrels, sugar gliders, rats, mice. And that was a real incredible experience. And having that experience alongside my degree really helped me to write my assignments and to complete my exams as well. And I took the job on full time after my degree completed. And this meant that I had more animals to look after. And I was looking after common marmosets, to mans, to ground cuscus, raccoon dogs, Asian shortboard otters, and it was a real opportunity for me to put my behavioural knowledge and my knowledge of animal training into good practice here. And I was using training programmes um, to improve the animal's welfare wherever I could. And alongside that, during my time there, I was given the opportunity to train the four flying squirrels that I worked with for a BBC documentary. So that was a really interesting and exciting 
experience and it definitely shows that you know hard work and giving up those weekends and putting in those extra days paid off because I was given opportunities as as a way of saying thank you and well done because I was showing that I worked so hard and so I continued to work um, as a full-time technical instructor for 18 months after my degree completed and I really felt that I'd I'd maxed out my my learning potential at that point so decided that I wanted to go and travel and explore the world so first stop I booked a year's trip to Australia and this was a real game changer and one of the most incredible years of my life and I went to Australia on a working holiday visa, so that means that I spend a proportion of my time working to earn money, and then the other proportion I spent travelling. And that meant I got experience working on dairy farms, and I went out to, to Oz absolutely terrified of horses, and got offered a job working with thoroughbreds, ended up falling in love with it, falling in love with horses, and then this whole new world of animal care and equine care was opened up to me, and that's been amazing since coming home and being able to actually apply for jobs working with horses because I'm no longer afraid of them. And alongside that, travelling through Oz, I I went through every single state and I documented all of the wildlife that I saw. I drove three hours with my best friend who I was travelling with to find platypus um, when we were in Tasmania because we wanted to see wild platypus and we found them. Um, We saw Tasmanian devils and kangaroos and koalas. It was a really incredible experience. And then we kind of ended our year, travelled over to New Zealand, made sure we got lots of whale watching, dolphin watching, and uh, finished off in Bali before returning back home to the UK. I really cannot recommend travelling enough. It was such an eye-opening experience, and it really helped me grow and develop as a person. And... I'm a reasonably anxious individual and that helped me manage my anxiety because I developed so much independence from travelling and I've really felt the difference since coming home. It's been over two years since I've been home and and there's there's a real change in how I behave now. And so when I got home, I managed to find a job within two weeks and so I accepted a job as an animal management lecturer and I did that for a year. It's a really hard job, be nice to your lecturer. And a real highlight of coming home wasn't just finding a job, but I also met the love of my life and he is a marine biologist and he's completing a a PhD at the moment and um, also loves to travel. So we decided that we would try and incorporate as much travel and as many wildlife adventures into our life as we possibly could whilst working at home. And I think we've achieved that. We drove around the entirety of Iceland in 2018 in October. We have travelled in the west coast of Ireland and then in 2019 we converted a van into a camper van and we spent a lot of 2019 travelling throughout England, Scotland, Wales, um, Ireland looking for animals and we've been documenting that wildlife um, on this YouTube channel and we've really enjoyed doing that. That's been a really great way to work a full-time job but also get that, that travel and adventure fix. Now this is kind of bringing me to present day me and what I'm doing with my career now. And last year I moved to Northern Ireland after I finished my job as an animal management lecturer and I decided that I wanted to complete a master's degree in animal behaviour. I'm three quarters of the way through and alongside that I have been working as a research assistant at a marine lab doing all kinds of different things that I never thought that I would be doing from working from fish with plants and microplastics and monitoring behaviour and it's been a real learning experience for me and I never saw myself in this scientific research field but there's something quite wonderful about working in research and knowing that your contribution and what you are putting out there could really be helping the welfare of hundreds if not thousands of animals and at the same time I'm getting to use animal behaviour to do that. And so my master's is due to finish um, this summer and I was recently offered a PhD placement here so I'll be starting a PhD in October. That is a three and a half year research job and so my PhD is looking at the impacts of stress on mother and young of fallow deer. So that means I get to do a whole three and a half years of animal behaviour study which I'm thrilled about and I get a doctorate at the end in animal behaviour. So... My career has very nicely shaped up 
um, into just the way that I want it to. But at the same time, it's not all about work. I'm still getting that travel in. I've got lots of exciting adventures planned from returning to New Zealand to trips away to Canada. And I'm really looking forward to being able to explore what's on my doorstep. And so it's really exciting that I'm here at this point in my career now. And I love that I get to share this with other people, but it has not always been plain sailing. There have been many failures. There have been many times where I thought that I wouldn't make it, but you just have to keep persistent. And I think it's really important to remember, and it's a rule that I live by, that you don't have to be talented, you don't have to be naturally good at something like English or maths to get to where you want to be. Because hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that's what you need to remember. You just need to work hard and show that you care and you will get where you want to be in life. So wherever you are now in terms of your career and what you are working towards, keep pushing. Even when your motivation is low or even when you feel like you're just not getting the results that you want, don't give up. You are allowed to have bad days, but remember the good days do come as well. And that really brings me to the end of my guest lecture video. I hope that it's helped some of you and that you can see that there are lots of different avenues of animal work that you can go down and you don't have to be set on one path, be open-minded, there's so many things that you could do. If you'd like to ask me any questions or get in contact with me then please feel free um, to ask Amy and she will give you my email address. If not you can always drop a comment on the video or you can message me via our Instagram account which is We Are Animals and please don't hesitate to ask me whatever you need. I hope you've enjoyed and it's not been too long and boring and uh, and have fun. Enjoy the rest of your college diploma and enjoy whatever else you do with animals. It will be more than worth it. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.